pre-show because we had some crazy audio problems this morning. So, deal with us, please. Happy 4th to everybody in the chat room. Thanks so much for joining us. My mic isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, we're going to do pre-show. So, welcome, everybody, to the chat room. Thank you so much for joining us today. We had a little bit of audio issues as we do every morning. And uh, we got some bigger ones this morning. But we're still doing the show. Thank you guys again for joining us. I want to give some shout outs to everybody in the chat room. Daryl saying hi. John K from Chicago is here. David Smith, Bruce Flog, Calman, David Smith. I probably already said Matable. I think we're it's a morning over here, yeah. yeah. We're going to start the show then. Oh, man. The, can I get an audio test from you? Hello, hello. It's a little bit lower, but I think it'll be okay. Right? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Something's there, yeah. It's like negative 12. I'm like negative 6. Hello, hello. I'll just have to whisper. Oh, okay. Wow, it's 11 p.m. over there. Where are you from, Bruce? Tell Pedro to shout, yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. That's good. That's pretty good. Yeah, just talk a little bit. 24 decibels. Man, these live shows are like tough. We're at episode 191 and still like hard to do. I don't get it. For episode 200, we'll we should have do a back no audio at all. Yeah, that'd be fun. We'll just do the make of charades. All right, so I think the main cause was our actual microphone, so. Yeah, let's see it in the mic. This is our new <laughs> microphone. He waste. Right he waste. Gosh. Right, let's go ahead and start the show. Okay, well, thank you guys again. Let's do this, this, uh, this thing we do. Gosh darn it. Do it again. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts episode 191 entitled Igniters and Gears. Happy 4th of July, guys. This week's project is a fireworks inspired. Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Fireworks inspired project that you might have seen. We just published this, um, what, like 12 a.m. last night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, so this week's project is taking a look at the very creative use of Nintendo Labo's elaborate little cardboard-based button. What's so cool about this is we're using cardboard as the spring for this. So it's all constructed using chipboard or cardboard. We actually did try this with uh, heavy cardstock and it worked just fine. So here is the implementation that I uh, prototyped with. And the reason that we did the copper tape on the top was because of the little IR reflective tape that's on there that the Nintendo Labo, uh, the IR sensor uses to see where the position of the button is. For this one though, we did have to modify it so uh, we could actuate buttons on the Circuit Playground Express, as we've been showing for, uh, for the past couple months. Super easy, all it does, the stem on the bottom has a copper tape that makes contact with the rest of the circuit, and that completes it, and allows you to have uh, button inputs onto the Circuit Playground Express. Super cool because you can build a bigger box with this, have a bunch of, uh, like, you know, buttons to be able to have as a musical instrument or of course as an audio box. Uh, so when we were showing this off, Lamar was like, hey, you know, 4th of July is coming up. Can we actually set off some fireworks? Now, initially I thought that she was talking about like firework animation in the, uh, in the LEDs. Mm -hmm. But as we thought about it more, we were like, huh, that'd be really cool to actually be able to set off fireworks. So last week we were looking at using uh, firework or uh, rocket igniters to actually have this go off. The only downside to this is they're single use. So as soon as you set them off, uh, they... Yeah, the filament kind of burns out. There's a little bit of powder coating that uh, makes a nice big spark because you kind of need that big spark to ignite a rocket engine. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we're lighting off fireworks, so we just need something to heat up. Yeah, and they're pretty pricey too. It's like 
What is it six bucks for like five of these things? They're like a dollar each. Which is less, it's like four of them. So three of not them. really a really yeah, good on economical way to light fireworks. So then we searched around and luckily somebody in the Discord came to the rescue and actually said to use heating elements used in vaporizers. So we went to our local vape shop. You should be able to find these in any of those since they are literally like they on have, every yeah. corner. Of they have different the types of wire, right? Mm -hmm. There's different types. Uh, the, the stuff that we chose is called Kenthal wire, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a high temperature wire that's normally used to make heating elements. There's a lot of different alloys and stuff that, that we searched around, but that's the one we kind of picked up. Yeah, so let me do a quick little demo. So what it is going on here is the bottom of the stem is completing the, um, the circuit on here. It's to nine volts, and it heats it up nice bright red where you're able to ignite uh, fuses, fireworks, mm -hmm. Uh, probably even rockets too, if you have like an igniter on the inside. I'm sure there's a way to be able to just use a heated coil to have those launch off. Yeah, that'd be a fun experiment. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if we take a look at the inside of this, super simple construction, we're using the uh, Noah's uh, box template. So this is fully parametric. Yeah. It's inside of Fusion 360. So if you want to do any adjustments, uh, like say it had uh, multiple buttons on there, to uh, modify for the Circuit Playground Express. You can definitely do that. For the traces, we're using this copper tape that we have in the shop. Just laid out a nice, simple little trace here. And all it's doing is making contact with the bottom stem to complete the circuit on that, like so. It's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and jump into the guide for this, or do you want to see a I actually nice want to do the intro. Of... Uh, so we got a coupon code. We're not shipping stuff today, but uh... Coupon code is still working today. We have Sparky as the coupon code mm -hmm. for various reasons. So if you go head on over to Adafruit.com, you can check out all the deals that we have. We still have some freebies. We aren't offering the Circuit Player Express, but we still are offering the, uh, the half-size breadboard, the Perma Proto. And uh, for uh, orders that are $100, $199 more, you still got that free shipping option. So check those out. We aren't shipping today again, but we'll, again, we will start shipping tomorrow. Speaking of shipping, same day delivery in New York City. That's a great option for everybody over there. We also want to shout out to our Circuit Python meeting that we do every Monday at 2 p.m. So if you want to join that, you got to go head over to the Discord server. So we got our Discord server um, popping right now, discord.gg slash Adafruit. It's a really great place to get project help. We actually got project help for this week's project. Yes. So shout out to the Discord uh, crew for helping us out pick some right. Uh, heating element wires and whatnot. It's always a great place to uh, to get some good engagement and things. Mm -hmm. uh, as we were talking about this week's project, you might have saw the YouTube video. If you haven't, please take some time to watch it. It's only about five minutes or so. Had a lot of fun uh, putting it together and uh, some, some nice shots of like sparks and stuff. <laughs> I like that we actually have a themed project for this year. If we've never done this before, we've never had a festive project yeah. really. Let's go ahead and just do a quick little demo of just lighting this. Um, uh, match okay. fires to show that it's pretty cool. Hey, let's light some stuff off. Some oh my gosh. And forth. <laughs> there we go. So we're actually going to do some more lighting off. Of we're going to actually, yeah. The show and tell. But and it's early right now. That. So let's do it on the show and tell. Tonight's show and tell is at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We also have Ask an Engineer. We are doing the shows. Lamar and Phil are ch chugging along today. Mm -hmm. No break for them. No break for us. <laughs> no, we could have if we wanted, but we're good. So if you want to see us light up some real fireworks, come on the show and tell at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to light up some stuff. We're going to do it outside here. Hopefully we've got good Wi-Fi. we got and a couple we'll of fireworks. That. So you'll, we'll actually ask the audience to pick which fireworks you want to get set off first. That's right. Got a nice little wide variety of them. All right, let's jump through our learning guide as we put this together. Um, want to share. Super easy, but you do have to take some care in actually setting this up. Uh, we note here that, of course, you can use this as inputs for various capacitive touch boards that we have. Yeah, and that really was the original idea. We just mm -hmm. wanted to have this cool external button that can light up electronics mm -hmm. um, that's you know constructed out of chipboard. And Again, still fascinated by the cardboard spring. Yeah, so real quick, this was cut on a cutting machine. We have, mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of pre-cuts here, um, but this will work with any type of vinyl cutter. Um, just need to do a couple passes. Cutting with a hobby knife or scissors. Yeah, so good. you can print this out. We have the template here as well. Um, so the intro page just kind of talks about uh, the stuff you'll need. 
So heat resistant wire, as we were talking about, Kenthal wire, it's, uh, it's normally used for heating elements. Um, it can withstand high temperatures. Uh, you put some current through it and you can light some stuff up. <laughs> <clears throat> so here are a couple of other things that we used in the project. This copper tape is really nice because it has adhesive, uh, has an uh, conductive, conductive adhesive, adhesive, so you can layer um, things together, which we actually had to do um, to be able to fully uh, actuate and, and close the circuit. We, had, we needed to kind of pad up the layers of copper tape, so you can do that um, with this copper tape. We also have a couple of different sizes of copper tape as well. We have a thicker roll as well, mm -hmm. so you can check that out. Um, they are in stock right now. This is really good stuff to have. Uh, we've done a lot of different projects with um, copper tape. We've done There's many a whole miles slew of, of traces, them. and we still have a full roll That's left. Right. We still have a, like like that one roll has lasted like years, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And there's there's way more projects that are even here in this list, but uh, it's in stock now. If you don't have copper tape, it's a great way to start prototyping stuff, make some uh, capacitive touch things as mm -hmm. well. A lot of different things you can do with copper tape. We also got nine volt batteries. Those uh, nine volt battery clips are really handy. JST connectors, and of course these alligator clips. Unfortunately, we're out of stock for the small alligator clips to male jumpers, but we do have the short wire alligator clips. So you can get a handful of those and kind of fashion your own. They are so useful, we need to get more, because uh, we'll probably make some more, mm -hmm. um, but they're really useful. So there's all the stuff we use in the project. Also, we, um, we linked to the chipboard that we like. This, so if you have yourself a Cree cut and you're looking to get into um, some different materials, this type of chipboard and this specific uh, manufacturer makes really good stuff. So if you want to pick up some, it's a, it comes in 12 by 12 sheets. It's a pack of 25. You also have the option to uh, choose different sizes, but the 12 by 12 is what you want to do if you're going to cut out this specific uh, button because it is kind of big. Um, you know, when you fold it out, it kind of takes up the whole sheet, so you'll need two sheets uh, to make this project. Vinyl cutters, you can go to Walmart, which is a supermarket here in the States, uh, or your local craft store. Here we have something called Michael's and Joann's. They all have these vinyl cutters. They're way more accessible than 3D printers and, or laser cutters, just saying. Uh, so we've been using them, as you've seen, uh, in a lot of different projects because we think it's a little bit more accessible, uh, especially for, for like a, sort of like an educational setting or a classroom workshop type setting. These machines uh, are, are pretty good. Mm -hmm. for constructing three-dimensional stuff. Yeah. There's my little, my little spiel about CreeCut. <laughs> All right, Go so let's head over to the circuit diagram. So the circuit diagram is really easy. We're, we have two nine volt batteries to really speed up the heating process. So you can wire those in parallel. That means you just wire negative to negative and uh, positive to positive uh, using the battery jackets because they, they clip on perfect. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about a secure fit. It just snaps in real, right away. Uh, and you could use any button. I, I would like to see a version with an arcade button, that big 100 millimeter yeah. arcade button, maybe mm -hmm. light it up with the LED in there as well. That would be a lot of fun. But since we got ourselves a cardboard button, that's what we used with copper tape. Um, and then you can see the alligator clip is connecting to the male JST connector. You don't have to do it this way. We just wanted to make it modular. So that's why we have alligator clips yeah. and jumper cables and JST connectors. So it's just one way to kind of um, make your wiring setup. It could be a lot simplified, uh, but it'd be a little bit more permanent. So we wanted to be able to kind of take things out. So that's the circuit diagram. Let's take a look at the box assembly. So here's what all the parts look like before they're folded. Uh, the SVG files are down here. So the first one is called Labo Button. That one is just the Nintendo Labo Button redrawn for laser cutters and um, cutting machines like this vinyl cutter here, but also for printing on a template. You may have to, re you may have to print it, um, oh boy, you might have to uh, take some, you can print it on a, pr on a printer, but it's 12 by 12, so you might have to do a little bit of hackeriness. Let us know if you need a, a, a different template. We can hook you up with that, because mm -hmm. we can do that. But if you have access to software like um, Inkscape, you could probably you you reposition. The, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you could, you could figure it out. And then the second file is called Box Fold Ignite. That is the box that houses the battery. It has uh, the proper holes and stuff for fitting in the button. Um, and that's really it. It's just a nice little kind of reusable box as well. Sparky label.svg, that one is just the Sparky label. Didn't really cover it much here, but 
It's a eight by 11 printout that you can print on 2D paper. Uh, and you just slap it onto whatever cylindrical, uh, fountain firework, or a boxed one if you want to Absolutely. modify the design. Yeah. It's uh, rescalable, it's SVG, mm -hmm. so you can take Sparky. He's got the little X eyes, which works out really well for yeah. this one. So you can check that out. All right, so those are the files. Let's move on over to actually assembling the button. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing you want to do is yeah. clamp all of the slots. You can use a uh, tweezers to uh, cut out, uh, to push out all the voids. The one thing that you want to do though is make sure you cut away at if they are hanging. So if they're still connected, if they're yeah. fully cut away, don't just rip something. It. Yeah, yeah, use something like a uh, flush cutter or scissors to um, cut those away instead of tearing those away. Yeah. they can degrade your uh, paper stock. Yeah, as you start ripping away, it's like a hangnail. Just keep <laughs> just keep, keep ripping going, yeah. more and more surface. So you wanna uh, make sure you kinda get those little tight cuts. Cause the machine is pretty darn good at making these precise cuts, but you still might wanna um, kinda use an exacto blade to, to fine tune those edges and corners. Cause it's a really fine tuned piece mm -hmm. here. We do include score uh, folds for the design. Uh, something like the uh, Cree Cut has a second yeah. head that allows you to use a <coughs> scoring pen. That's right. That'll give you all of your fold lines. <coughs> and then you will have to go in there with a hobby knife and actually cut at uh, a slight cut yeah. to make sure that the uh, edges are nice and clean. We use something like a flat, dull uh, you know, piece of metal, like a spudger. Yeah. You should have put actually in the tool section. Hmm. That helped out for folding, huh? Yeah, so I just used my nail, but uh, yeah. the sponger is probably and you want to make sure better. that it is nice and folded. If you do, uh, you know, if you don't fold it uh, completely, it will um, come off. So if you go over the overhead, oh, you yeah? kind of see, see what happens if you don't fully fold it. It will have tendencies uh, yeah. to not stay in place. they will want to come out. So you do want to make sure that you take uh, note at where the fold lines are for all of the uh, parts so they can stay in place. Yeah, like that. look how much crisp that is when you actually cut a little bit of the surface. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut all the way through, no, yeah. just like the first layer of the cardboard should be enough to make sure that all of the um, pieces and walls stay rigid and in place and don't unfold themselves. Yeah, and huge shout out to the Nintendo Labo team um, for their uh, assembly and, and video. This really what inspired this whole project. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a rip off that, but yeah. it's really cool. Okay, <coughs> back over to the guide. Take a look at um, putting together the spring. So and the spring kind of folds together. This. You can um, yeah, sure. walk over it or go through it if you are actually going to build one, but a nice uh, simple way to assemble all this. It may look like it's complicated, has a lot of pieces. It kind of it, is, but oh, it, it's kind of like once you coming. build like the first or second one, it's pretty easy to yeah. uh, make a couple. That's what I was shouting out to Nintendo Labo because the way they didn't they didn't write it down in words, it they just, just animated everything, which mm -hmm. is kind of good and kind of bad because you yeah. can't really convert it um, for you know accessibility. You kind of oh, want to yeah, have words. Exactly. Yeah. So this is kind of nice that we have that nice set up. Detailed um, instructions for assembling each part of the. Uh, button. I think yeah. there's one, two, three, yeah. four, five, uh, about five different parts. I need if you have a Nintendo Labo and you haven't built the house yet, build the house thing because this is where that button came from, the house project. And that one element Which alone I have was not like. I noticed okay, a lot of people building. Cool. They always went for the fishing. I love the fishing. The, the, the driving. The, dri uh, the, the motorcycle. The piano, of course. Piano, of course. It has something similar to this button, but not really a push button. No, it's button. not a it's push like button. A turn this button. is the only push button. Mm -hmm. like, so don't really check. Give yeah. that uh, build a try. It comes with the variety pack. Uh, yeah. So check it out. That's pretty Scroll cool. Down. All right, so, so we're still fashioning the button. Just kind of follow the guide, follow all the folds and stuff. Mm -hmm. All the little tabs fit in the right spots. Yeah, the box fold is just a gif since it's pretty easy to look at where all the score Yeah, the box is really are. easy to put together. I, I think there's a click on it because we're still having some weird. Yeah, some issues. Um, issues with. Yeah, so you gifs. can so any image in the learn guide. If it's too small for you, just it's click on it. Cut off. Yeah. You get the full scale here. 19, uh, 1920 by ten eighty is mm -hmm. what this one is. Oh, it's pretty big for a gif. So yeah. Very simple Sweet. to fold and assemble. And of course, um, same tip with the, the little tabs here that are actually holding that together. You want to make sure that those are nice and clean folds. Otherwise, they will pop out and it won't hold your box together. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that they are all the way inside like that. Yep. Or you can tweak the box too. Uh, mm -hmm. Or just tape it up if you want a more permanent secured fit. But Glue yeah, it, it, tape it. Like that. No. Pretty sweet. Boom. 
All right, let's move on over to the rest of the assembly. Over here, we got the circuit assembly. So laying out your circuit trace with the pads, you definitely want to do some planning. There's several different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. This is the way you did it. So Yeah, so um, you could go the route of having the copper traces on the top so they meet. Uh, go ahead and go to the yeah, overhead. Um, there's a reason why you didn't do it that way, though. Yeah, I don't want to have to run all the yeah, wires through. A little bit step. more hacky this way. Yeah. Not as elegant. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more room for it to kind of not work this way. Yeah, so what we're doing here is uh, using the tab that actually closes the stem, and we're wrapping the uh, copper tape around that, and then leaving a nice little tab on here where we are able to connect our alligator clips. And when this pushes down, it will close the circuit. Jump back into the guide. Let's do it. And then setting up the trace for inside of the box, you just want to create a F shape. The negative is going to go on the uh, the short one, the positive can go on the longer one. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you can flip it too. You, you can want. flip it around, yeah. yeah. And then we're using these little uh, pieces of tape to create the tabs on the end. And this yeah. is where our wire extensions are going to hook up into. That's right. Just a quick note, you could also solder directly to this. Just let you know, I've done that before. Definitely it good. works mm -hmm. if you have the, at the time. Uh, and the equipment to do so, you can do it, or you could just kind of cut this out and yeah. make an alligator tab, because it's a lot more easier to connect to it with an alligator mm -hmm. clip. All right, here is some actual soldering. We wanted to make a really nice um, battery connector for this, so you can splice together two of these 9-volt jackets, or you can call them plugs, clips, whatever you call them. Battery connectors. Yeah. So we're using two of these and just connect these in parallel up to a female JST connector. The reason we're doing that is so we can plug in the uh, jumper to alligator clips. This is going to make it easier to attach to the tabs on the button stem and the trace on the box. Yeah, I actually didn't know you could plug into the male JST connector. Yeah, or maybe yeah, it's I a tried. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a female. But Sorry. super handy to be able to do that. You could, of course, build your own jumper to alligator clips if you have those around. We showed how to do that about yeah. two episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the end, I used speaker wire, but I had a bunch of silicone uh, coated wire around. And there was this nice little 3D printed bit um, to twist wire. So if you guys aren't aware, every, 3D th uh, every Thursday, we have a ton of blog posts on really useful, practical, practical, practical 3D printing uh, files that we find all over the net on okay. Imagine Thingiverse. So definitely check the blog every Thursday for that. We posted about this about a month ago, and I couldn't remember what it was. If you try searching through Thingiverse or any of the other STL repositories, there's just, you know, there's no way to really filter these. So if you check out the blog, the most okay. useful um, <laughs> What is it called? Because it's not linked. <laughs> it should show up on there. It's not linked. What is it called? I'm so funny. It's not linked in the guide. What is it called? Oh, just type in uh, wire twist. <laughs> Watch it not show up. <laughs> Boom, right there. That's how Excellent. Good our let's search uh, on our blog is. <laughs> let's actually link this in the guide because we have the capability of doing so. I just have to come in here and hit the edit page. <laughs> Guys, we did this like last night. Give us a break. <laughs> come on. <laughs> this 3D printed drill bit that is not linked. Hey man, it happens. That's why I'm here to back it back you up. All right, cool. Well, that's a great little tip. I didn't even know that. I have no idea. So this is really cool. For yeah. A lot of useful 3D prints. It happen as, happens every hour, a half hour, depending on how many posts we have. That's super cool. Don't want to waste my time. On, yeah, that's great. It's, good. it's what engineers do. They, they're like, I um, spent more time mm -hmm. fixing the problem than avoiding the problem. I don't know. Forget it. Anyway, very cool tip. It's easy. But like I said, in the end, I just <laughs> use speaker wire that's already connected, but you can definitely uh, use this for custom length wires. Sweet. Nice little tip there. All right, let's do Next some up, button, button inserting. insertion into the actual box. You just want to uh, angle them in. When you're pushing it in, just angle each corner so you're not tearing any of the uh, little flaps that hold in the button like I did here. You take a look at this side here, you'll see that there's these edges here. Those are actually stoppers that prevent the box from being fully inserted in. So very, really clever on Nintendo Labo's design team on this part to make this end stopper, um, and it works really well. Mm -hmm. All right. Move on to uh, placing all the components inside. You can use uh, double foam stick tape to adhere the two batteries to one of the walls on there. You just want to make sure that it's out of the way from the stem and free from obstruction when you are pushing down on the button. 
and you can attach the wires and then thread it through the opening on the side of the box. Yeah, so on the side of the box, it kind of serves as two things as I, I didn't even know. Well, you want to take a look at the overhead. Um, it allows you to see inside there, so you can see if there's anything being obstructed, mm -hmm. if the copper tape is um, like working or not. Contact? Yeah. yeah, you can shine some light in there if you wanted to see inside. Is this shine light? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought the power went out for a second. I was like, well, there goes our internet. And let's go ahead and take a look at the hero of the heat. Where hero this is of the coming heat? from, the ignition hero for this. It's the uh, heat up wire. Yeah, the Kenthal. Um, so yeah, there are so a, diff a lot of different types so many of different. Just type in wires. heat wire and you'll see so many of them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. and and you can I mean, just walk Amazon? into your, um, your smoke shop. Vapor, yeah, vape shop. Yeah. Vape shop. Cigar shop, have whatever. a bunch of different types in there. Yeah, they you also come pre-coiled. So you can yeah, do that as well. Oil. We got a spool of it because uh, we didn't know how much we would need, mm -hmm. um, but we, we were able to just coil it. We got some great comments too on the YouTube video, uh, which we'll take a look at here. I think I put it there. Yeah, so uh, the main thing was that you could use um, eight windings, the too many wraps, and it actually won't get hot enough. Mm -hmm. um, which so I'm just is using eight uh, coils on this one. You are? Mm -hmm. That's great, that's exactly what it is. Um, and you kind of want to make sure that your your uh, your resist your overall resistance is 1.5 to 2 ohms. This is actually uh, pinned in the YouTube video comment. So if anyone wants a little bit dive deeper into into that, you can take a look at it. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So we wrapped our own, um, or you can get them pre-coiled, depending on how you want it. Yeah, I think it was definitely to. cheaper to just get the uh, spool of this and just coil it yeah. yourself. It's not too hard. Uh, I just laid it on top of a small uh, driving uh, screwdriver to wind this up against. Yeah. It's easy to do. Yep. 26 gauge or 30 gauge. And you can one. just dress up your box once you're completed. We're just using a glue stick to adhere these Minecraft TNT graphics. Yeah. This is totally a uh, last minute thing that we were able to just yeah, throw on there. Yeah, we actually reshot everything because of this. <laughs> it looked we? way more better. Yeah. Well, I thought there were a lot of test shots. On there. Yeah. And then move on to the fuse extensions. You can actually get these uh, at your firework shops. I'm pretty sure they should be available online as well. Um, one thing to note though is as, that these are actually sold as fireworks with the uh, fuses acting as the sparklers. Yeah, the sparklers? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the sparks, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, here's the sign. We took a picture of it um, at the actual, it was on the end cap at our, I think it's called uh, Firework King or something like that, whatever firework store you have at your local area, if mm -hmm. you have access to one. Um, this is how they sell fuses these days. I mm -hmm. remember we used to walk in and they'd have rolls of it, spools of it. Now they, mm -hmm. it's kind of a two-in-one. You can either use it for the fuses or just light it off because this is its own firework. We want to make sure <laughs> we caution that these are very powerful. Like you don't want to hold these in your hand because they do fly off. They, they propel pretty good because there's actual gunpowder inside of them. If you take a look at one of the thicker ones, uh, I, I kind of misspoke like in the video. In this actually is slower. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, if they're Not going quicker. slower, it's, what did it say on that, 25 uh, seconds per foot? Is yeah, this is the, the thicker one. 25 seconds per foot, yeah, and then yeah. the thinner one is about 10 or 5 seconds per foot. And it's just a little bit thinner when yeah. you get these. Uh, should be very useful for other... This is going to last us for like the rockets. next five years because there's so much so, of the... Uh, maybe. Look how much fuses long, yeah. we have. Well, you you want to open <laughs> up the actual firework and you'll see all your fuses all inside here. You just cut all those down. You want to make sure that your surface area uh, can get dirty because once you cut into these, the gunpowder is going to it's a good tip, yeah. get on your area. Mm -hmm. Put some paper down here. You so what it is it. just cut these down to size because a lot of the fountain, the um, fountain fireworks, their fuses are uh, almost always at the top. It's yeah. a nice little small fuse as well. Yeah. So you can add those on there. And to adhere it, we're just using paper tape. That's right. Over here, we got a nice little shot of that. It's mm -hmm. paper tape. And take note of how I actually uh, hooked that up. I have the tape below where the tip of the original fuse is. Not so that um, as it's lighting up, it can l ignite the, uh, the original fuse. It won't get the tape in the way. Sorry, I had to get over there. That's pretty much it. You want to make sure that your um, your extension wire is long enough to be a safe distance. I just made mine like four feet, 
uh, since since these aren't super dangerous, it's just you know fountains that are going off on it. But if yeah. you are having uh, you know fireworks that are a lot more bigger and can uh, have bigger explosions, you do want to make sure that it's long enough. One tip: um, the way you have it tabbed there, I would coil that tape more because there was one instance where it just flew off. And uh, so I was using it was a dud uh, sort so of. What happened there is I was using a different type of tape. It oh. has like less adhesion on it. Oh. So, oh, it's so it's like a masking tape. So you want to make sure, yeah, that it... That yeah, you it want to make sure this is tied good because it's going to suck yeah. to like see this 20 second fuse and then it's, and just flies it off. flies off at the okay. end. Which is kind of fun. All right. Well, that's pretty much the project in a nutshell. More details in the guide. Mm -hmm. uh, if you read through it and you want to build your own, experiment. Do some different things. And we did a lot of Googling to find out how a lot of people were making these igniters and this a is definitely the easiest way. It's just two One nine of the volts, easiest ways, yeah. Two nine heating volts. element. Um, a lot of people were suggesting using relays and... That's if you want a controlled thing. This is not really controlled. There's no digital stuff going on here. It's all analog, yeah, which works out really well. Anything. Very simple, very the easy to access to. Two is that you can have these pretty close. Uh, you are going to get soot on them though, but no worries, it just wipes right off, so you're not really damaging. Oh, That's actually the reason why I have it set up uh, with the shorter alligator clip, so I could swap this out if it indeed burnt out, but it survived pretty well. I'm surprised that we, the sheathing we, is PVC. It didn't melt or anything? Uh, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you might want to pull your, uh, your device away from the firework as soon as the fuse gets lit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I don't know if we covered it, but we just, we just rested, oh my gosh, it's hot. We just rested the fuse on top of the heating element. We didn't have oh, to tie yeah. it to the heating element. We didn't have to tape it to the heating element. Yeah, it's it just pretty much sits just on there. Oh, right don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to fly. <laughs> do not do that. That is Again, not Again, if you want to see these safe. fireworks go off, tune into the show and tell. And we'll let the audience choose which fireworks you want set off first. Yeah. They're all a little different. Oh, no. Let's <laughs> get that gunpowder off of that cool. purple. Excellent. All right, we're a little bit over. So, um, yeah, so. we did mention last week of that we were able to get the five volt um, pin on the NeoPixel side of the of the uh, Cricut to light off the uh, firework or the rocket igniters. That was able to work really well. But of course, we wanted to make something that was cost effective in terms of reusability. So that's why we went with the heating wire. Um, Lamar did order a bunch of these, so she will be doing her own tests. If we can do like a timed fireworks show, it would be pretty cool. Yep. Actually, oh, perfect segue. <laughs> that was this week's project. Definitely check it out. Get all the files oh, to cut your own out. Hey, John Park. Good morning. He's saying uh, Adafruit IO, so people can click to launch it. Oh, that would be great. Be yeah, that'd be a really fun yes. project. I think we'll we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to revisit. We do this. have some rocket so igniters, fun, so yeah. uh, maybe we make a Falcon 9 rocket or something. Yeah, and we noticed that there's like three firework shops that are like open like all year round, so we can definitely right. go back and get more supplies uh -huh. if needed. Excellent. All right, well, that's this week's project. I hope you guys enjoy it. Remember just to be safe, be responsive. Responsible. All that stuff. Let's jump into what are we prototyping? You got a little taste of it already, so. Uh, speaking of the cricket board, um, we took a little bit of time and modeled the cricket board and the assembly with the circuit playground as a 3D model in Fusion 360 so that folks can uh, use this uh, assembly in their designs if they want to 3D print uh, some like some appendages <laughs> or uh, so like a mount or something for the circuit playground express. Uh, we brought the Eagle CAD file that Lamar designed. Brought it into Fusion 360 and extruded it out. Added some silkscreen graphics to it and put together this little animation that shows how the uh, how the standoffs bolt onto the board and how the circuit playground rests on top of that, mechanically secured with these M3 screws. Uh, and JP actually had a good idea of, of showing the back side of this because you, you do need some screws to secure mm -hmm. the standoffs to the actual board. Totally. And you want to make sure to mention that if you did download the previous circuit uh, playground right. express board, you want to make sure you grab the updated one. The mm -hmm. Uh, all of the components are in the correct spot this time. Well, it's not like they weren't. It's for Rev D. We're on Rev uh, E, mm, so that well, was the thing. Happened, yeah. Yeah. I modeled it for an older Rev. Now it has um, IR and yeah, IR receiver and mm -hmm. transmit. So that's really cool. And uh, all the such all the LEDs are in the right spot and everything like that. So that works out well. Um, yeah. So let's take a look at the little mount that we 3D printed. We wanted to make just a little quick mount, so I'm not scratching my my desk with the the little um, what would you call them? The little Pandora. sharp solder points. There's also little um, r spots on the board for like um, little rubber feet and stuff. Um, but you could just 
make a, a mount for this. So the way the mount works is it has um, standoffs on it. There's a bunch of mounting holes on the circuit playground or on the cricket. You don't need to use the ball. You can just use like four or two of them like diagonally. But the thing I wanted to do is I wanted to create this cutout here so that I can have the interchangeable mounting uh, brackets. This one is my tripod mounting adapter. So it has a three eighths to quarter 20 insert so that I can uh, add a uh, tripod so that I can mount it on different areas that I need to. So you can give it some little elevation with a tripod, especially like a small one. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, it snaps in like that. I'll probably put like a snap fit mechanism so it gets locked in place or maybe do a little twisty action there. Um, but it adds a lot of ventilation too to have this as a whole. And uh, you can save some printing time by cr cutting a big hole out of your bottom if you, if you can do that. Um, but that's all it really does. It has a couple slots here, openings, because USB cables like to be really chunky. Here's the DC jack right there. That's all it is, just a nice little mounting tray. We'll throw it up on Thingiverse later today. Um, but that's what uh, we put together real quick. Um, yeah. So, so the reason that you put this together was for prototyping. Do you want to show this off? Um, we're, yeah, we got a little bit of time. So we're working, I'm so, I'll just show the Snapchat. Uh, so uh, Phil brought this to my attention. He was like, hey, check out this, uh, this video. Um, there's a gentleman who's a woodworker who put together a rack, a reciprocating rack and pinion. Um, let's just do this. I completely forgot to do this stuff here. Oh boy, where did it all go? All my text objects. Oh, Wirecast. Oh, there it is. Is it text two? Reciprocating rack and pinion. Yeah. So let's bring it out. Uh, let's actually bring it out here. So uh, the the goal was to can we can we make one out of the cricut? cut? You know the cricket. Can we, can we cut it out of a chipboard? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. Um, we totally can. So we put together this design in Fusion 360 and cut it out on our vinyl cutter machine using chipboard. We just layered. Uh, four pieces of chipboard together to get this like three to four millimeter thick um, piece. Uh, the, the fingers are, um, they, they work out pretty well. Um, so the way this works is that there's, uh, there's two uh, tracks here with teeth. They're slightly offset and then there's a slot here. So the, so the, the, the thinking is that you have a uh, sort of a dowel that gets inserted in here and then let's go ahead and put it together. So I 3D printed this little uh, adapter here that has a little, uh, has these little, um, what do you call them? These little posts that kind of stick out and they allow, they're kind of like registration keys to allow this to be inserted into the slot, but then it can lock this, uh, this piece here, this wheel into the adapter. If you just press fit it like that, maybe I press fit it too much. Now it's pretty good. And uh, the way this works is that it only rotates one way. So if you try to rotate it this way, it won't engage. But as soon as it starts rotating this way, there's clearance right here between this teeth and this one. And it catches the bottom, which allows it to go linearly left and right. And it, it just has enough clearance here on this teeth that it uh, catches the next track up here. And then it repeats that motion going backwards forwards, backwards, forwards. So this is a good way to uh, convert ro rotational movement into linear. So that's how it works. So the next step is to uh, get this hooked up to a TT motor. So this extra piece here is a little adapter for a TT motor. I would show it off, but uh, it only works uh, this way and <laughs> not, not flat like that. So I have to create a mount uh, for the motor and uh, a bit of a, a sliding mechanism here, sort of a, a I don't know what it's called, I guess two bars here that will keep this um, from rotating. I was like touching on that. Um, but I have some video of it working here in the Snapchat that I'll show. Uh, but that's, that's kind of what we're prototyping, seeing if we can create uh, gear mechanisms out of chipboard cut on a vinyl cutter. And uh, so far it's working okay. Um, put this together in Fusion 360 because it was really helpful to kind of have tools where I can create one thing, repeat it, create another thing, circular pattern, you have full control over the pitch. It's a complete parametric. Um, originally I had it like really big, then I scaled it down. We're going to keep playing with the design um, to see what we come up with. So let's take a look at the Snapchat, just kind of get a process of what it looks like. So this is the individual pieces cut up separately. 
the chipboard is about 0.8 millimeters thick. It's not that thick, but it's still thick enough to where you can just stack them to create this nice mm -hmm. thick thing. Using just regular old glue stick um, to adhere the pieces together, it works pretty well. Um, I also like to use super glue uh, for these tighter things, but the glue stick seems to work out pretty well. And yeah, glue stick. Gets a little messy, so I use a little um, pokey tool to kind of smooth out the edges. Uh, it's just kind of test fitting the snap fit here. Uh, tolerance has come out really well on the Cricut. Um, so it's pretty close to one-to-one. Uh, one. Yeah, it's pretty close to one-to-one, one. yeah, it's good. I didn't have to do any extra offsetting like I do with 3D printing. Um, there's the uh, thing working there. I actually used breakaway support material for that little uh, registration key, um, which, which was, I'll you know, talk about it more uh, for the actual project, but there it is kind of testing it. Um, like the 16th time. <laughs> um, yeah, I posted a story on my Instagram that shows just how many um, pieces. How many times I did so yeah. I really like prototyping with chipboard on mm -hmm. a pre-cut machine because it takes it's fast. so long to 3D print this track. It takes us like a minute, less than that, to cut four but of these. By the time your head, your bed is done heating up, you already have like three your prototypes. One, yeah. <laughs> And here it is not working, <laughs> um, but it, it ended up working if you just position it right. So mm -hmm. I still got to kind of smooth out, either smooth this out or again, create that track on the back for the motor so Certain that it doesn't rotate. Still. Yeah. So that's uh, again. I don't think we actually mentioned what's going on here. So it's translating I did. rotational. No, I already did that. You're, you're doing tweets, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can, let's hear Pedro explain it though. Just okay, so it's iteration. translating rotational movement into linear motion. So it's rotating and this is just going up and down. What this would be really handy for is something that's moving up and down and yeah. you want to just have a rotational uh, motor on it. Yeah, don't duels use this like a scroll saw or something where it's moving up and down? I remember seeing it's this design is. like in a sprinkler. Really? Hmm. That's how it goes like from um, one way and then it rotates back. So this was really cool. Um, there's a bunch of like animations of a bunch of like really cool elaborate gears and a lot of them have not been actually, they haven't actually been made. Those are really cool to be able to actually make um, what was seen as theoretical turn into yeah, a, yeah, totally. a world. Yeah, I was just sitting there reading some of the comments and uh, Andy Calloway had a question about uh, what is chipboard? It seems like a type of cardboard. Yes. John Park was actually saying uh, it's like a paper. It. Yeah, so the cardboard has the coordinations on it. Actually, John, John Park came out with a guide that talks Essentials all about chipboard and, and cardboard. cardboard. Yeah, yeah so, so check, check that out. out. This came out uh, this week, last week. This week, last week. Uh, all blurs together. Should be on the front page of learn.adafruit.com. Yeah, well, let's check it out real quick. And it has all of the different sizes, links to where to get these. You want to talk about cardboard? Fundamentals. Go to the guide for the cardboard. <laughs> Look at all the cardboard stuff. Yeah, so very cool. And that's kind of what we're working with. Um, that's for prototyping. Those, those couple things. Actual applications for this, um, we haven't really thought about, again, uh, anything that needs to move up and down from rotational motors. Uh, this is pretty much just, you know, the files and being able to have this work. Yeah, the whole course, the goal was, is, can we do this on a Cricut machine? The mm -hmm. answer is yes, it's, it's totally. Yeah. It takes a little bit of work. Uh, Phil found a lot of different generators. There's so many generators online to create gears and um, mm -hmm. teeth, I guess. Um, but I really wanted to uh, create it as a parametric model that's scalable in Fusion. So yeah, we'll show that, that off. It's super fancy the way you can set that all it's up. It's okay. Yeah. Nice little animation for that. Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's just a satisfying mechanism oh, to it's watch. A, it's, it's pretty so neat. Yeah. Once we get it though at that right spot where it's able to mm -hmm. um, be stationary what's, and just move the rack, that yeah, would be so really nice. What's so crazy about this is because these are all glued on top of each other, they're not actually straight. They're, they're not like no. going up and down. Same thing with the gear. So it's really cool that they are still able to engage even yeah. though there's just not. enough uh, clearance for this mm -hmm. to work. There's a little bit of room for slop, so, so you could cool. hand hand do it totally. So hand you cut could it. totally cut this out of like thicker or like card stock and mm. just stack them up. Yeah, true. And that's Sweet. pretty good. Excellent. All right. Here we go. You're done with reciprocating. Jumping into and this week's yawn. community makes. We missed one from last week. We're having too much fun with this week's project. This week's time lapse, or last week's time lapse Tuesday, was this really cool gimbal. Yep. Featuring Westworld since it was the season finale last week. And the question everybody has is who is not a robot on that show? Yeah, <laughs> I am. 
So one of the thing, there's one of the questions people were asking is, how did you animate the gimbal actually going without having your hand in it? Here it is. Here's the secret revealed: a little red straw with air, just compressed air. Yeah. That's all it is, and then uh, just shoot it in slow mo. Right. You got a little too close there, but you just got it where the shot was uh, mm -hmm. out of the way. We didn't rotoscope it. I was actually telling Peter, did you seriously rotoscope <laughs> this? Like, are you crazy, man? But no, we didn't rotoscope it. Another cool tip is uh, we shot this with our iPhone, and the iPhone does some really good uh, high-quality slow-mo. Mm -hmm. So what is this, 1080? The only trick you have to do is shoot it outside. That is true. Sunlight. You shot this outside, so we got our little setup here. It's just a piece of a wood. magic arm yeah. to hold the phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a magic arm to hold the phone. Uh, Just make sure you're shooting at yeah. uh, 240 frames a second, uh, the 1920 by 1080 setting. Uh, it's just our compressed air, and any part of this actually does a really good job of spinning it. Sweet. Dual extruded, but you don't need to since these come right off, so you could just print each one of these <laughs> rings on a single extruder, and it's the same sort of setup for the gimbals, it's just this um, little cone. Uh -huh. is printing which is the same angle. kind of uh, uh, geometry you used for your LED sand gimbal. Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Came out pretty good yeah. with the um, line width set to, I think, 0.35, but it should matter. Let's check it out. Here's the video if you guys didn't see it yet. Um, printed on the Ultimaker 3 We're using just regular PLA. I'm surprised it only took two hours to print. That's it's very, not that big. very surprising. It's on the Z, yeah, it's okay. pretty short and yeah. small. But you could definitely scale that up. Very clean should, print. Uh, it should print on any uh, size bed. No need for pur uh, purge towers or ooze shields or any of this stuff. Nope. Just straight printing. No waste created from it. Default no settings. No supports. Uh, updated default settings in Cura 3.4, I think is yeah. the latest one. This is crazy. It just, just came out of the beta. shot. It's like, is it backwards? Is it fake? Is it Photoshop? <laughs> and then this week's 3D... Uh, time lapse is another shout out to another movie. Shout out to out. Chris Pratt <laughs> with his lovely new Cash Cow movie. <laughs> we saw it. It was it was fun. It was a fun roller coaster cool. ride. I liked yeah. it. I so like the practical effects. This is Flucky Raptor, or Flexi what it looks like Raptor. is uh, blue. Oh, it's Raptor blue from uh, Jurassic Park: Fallen Kingdom. Rar. What I really like about this is, yeah, the, the articulation in this um, movement from the tail that like just goes, follows through up into the head. It's a really good job. Yes. And what's super cool about this is the way that he constructed the hands and the feet. You can actually have this holding on to things as shown right. in his Thingiverse pictures. You can have it on like cups, sides of your desk or on a monitor. There's also an update. Um, uh, Cave Dog is the Thingiverse user, the designer who, of the Flixie Raptor. He also made a version where the tail is like up, or is oh, it down? Cool. It's curved, so you can kind of bite his own tail. Um, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's the iconic Raptor um, fossil from mm, Jurassic Park, yeah, I think. Yeah. So pretty neat, inverted. I thought it was just like yeah. Ninja Flex or something. No, I think it's, there's two different ones. And he's been updating it. A couple of folks had problems oh, yeah. with the tail breaking. So ours is kind of an outdated design. Yeah. Um, so as of May, I don't know if that's May the right May. Yeah. yeah, you improve the feet for better stabilization. That's really cool to kind of keep adding to the project because yeah. people were really liking it. This a lot really of makes. Good model, yeah. We'll post our remix because uh, we, we just separated the parts. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Which can be a little bit tricky to do. Mm -hmm. Definitely if, looks a lot more better uh, being dual extruded. So you can see the different segments for that. And I really like how well this uh, the, the hinges on this turned out what's cool is it goes up and down and side to side too like a snake really right. cool yeah you do want to be careful on the last piece here the tail is or the tail hinge for this does decrease as it goes from the the base to the yeah the so tip. there's some scaling if you scale it you down do not want to scale this yeah. uh or the way we were able version. to fit this on our bed on the ultimaker is diagonally and you do have to do manual placement so like nudging of your uh your X and Y on the bed to have this, you know, perfectly uh, diagonal because okay. the, the the default centering. Um, oh, the center option doesn't the, do a good job. Does it? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it'll tell you that it's too big. Yeah. All right, just a little tip. This is for Cura only, by the way. Cura seems to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's the the things. So check out, uh, you know, shout out to Cave Dog for the Flexi Raptor. Also, 
Okay. Yeah, shout out to uh, Keith Joe, who mm. made the Westworld Maze Gyro. So you can get both of these, print them out. Um, we'll upload the dual extrusion remixes later today. And that's, uh, those are the Time Lapse Tuesdays, this and last week. Mm. Let's jump into more community makes, just a quick um, highlights to the lovely people who actually post uh, makes, because it's kind of difficult to do it. So the dodecahedron posted make by Tracer Elmo. Thanks so much for posting that. This is just a fun little test print. Um, we've, we've printed it really big. Uh, we printed it small. We've made it a dual extrusion version, just kind of nice little test. And shout out to Aiden XYZ, who uh, showed me how to actually model this, um, this geometry, which is a lot of fun. Check it out if you want to print your own dodecahedron. We have the Raspberry Pi face case. One of my favorite designs put together in, uh, a couple years ago. It's still a nice one. It's a case for your base. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a case for the Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. Um, so uh, Critical Point on Thingiverse posted it, printed it in purple, and has these glow-in-the-dark teeth. Very cool. I might remix this for, uh, for SnapFit designs with the Pi 3 or something, maybe. Maybe for uh, a Metro M4. Anyway, very fun case. Still up there. It still works. Eighty three fidget spinner. This is great. Uh, Siskelis on a yeah, fidget spinners are comeback. Let me tell you. No, so this is <laughs> they're not making comeback. Um, so shout out to uh, uh, Sis Siskelis on Thingiverse for posting this make. This kind of neat, trippy uh, concentric patterns going on there. The Eighty fruit logo. Maybe you can remix it to do something else. But hey, it's a fidget spinner. This is a really nice remix. It's called PyTab. Uh, so we put together a project for the seven inch touchscreen from the Pi Foundation. They the made their own, screen. yeah, the official Pi screen. He took a design and really made it really nice. So there's a camera back there, access to the GPIO and a little GPIO cheat sheet um, with like nice really labels cool. and stuff and a nice little Pi logo at the back there. There's also um, some spots for HDMI and audio. Mm -hmm. And there's also a spot for kind of powering external stuff. So this is a 5 volt power supply on the left side of the case. Super cool. Very, very nice. So very cool. There's a glow in the Pi logo back there. Yeah, very cool. Um, and then, yeah, the original was the uh, this one here, um, which is a nice, fun build. Still uses the same kind of tray mechanism to mm -hmm. uh, mount everything. Very fun. So shout out to to Lifalus Jubilus, Jew Labs, Jewel Labs on Thingiverse for posting this remix. Really nice. Very cool. And of course, all the files are open source, so you can remix it and parametric timeline and all that good stuff. Yes. Very yes, cool. Yes. One last thing. Really cool video project from our favorite um, prankster. <laughs> More like MAME. Yeah, um, look, look this will be in, in uh, hey, it's summer of making. If you haven't seen uh, Caitlin's dad, Caitlin's super dad, check him out on YouTube. Always coming out with a really cool, yeah. like, meme type uh, projects yeah. using a different gear. There's the shark There's coming. There's one who he redid the raccoon game and made it into a little shark game. Yeah. And it has us getting away <laughs> from the shark. <laughs> I think I made it in the way I think you get eaten I get by the eaten, shark. Yeah. I think you make slow. it at the last minute. Maybe. <laughs> so what it is here is using the cap touch buttons to advance. Um, yeah. The little magnet that's underneath. Yeah. And cricket. Forward. There's a full guide for this. Cricket. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I need a new picture. I need to send him like a pre-Photoshop picture of me with my good side. <laughs> there I am. No, run faster. <laughs> Are we killing enough time yet? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, hey, look, it was a race the whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. Well, thank you, Caitlin's dad, for making that. <laughs> Super cool. I'm still waiting for my minion, minionized. <laughs> Maybe for episode 200. Check out the, his playlist. Of his playlist is quite, <laughs> quite, quite hilarious. Good use of paper crafting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, very chuffed. Thank you. Well, I think it's going to do it for this week. I think you had one more thing. Uh, you updated the Trinket M0 model as well. So you guys yeah. Uh, I, that. I, I got are always asking for this. People are asking just for point it. to the 5 volt. Um, yeah, I hate doing that. Like, you just use the 5 volt one. That one's just fine. Actually, no, we, no, it's not. No, it's, it's not the not. same size. <laughs> it is, but it's it doesn't have all My the hope? new components. Mm. Where's the screen? There it is. 
All right, let's jump into tunnel view and look at Fusion 360. Uh, so here's the Cricut thing. It's all there. All the things are here. The Trinket M0 is here. I took a screenshot of our uh, fritzing, uh, our fritzing parts. We have a fritzing library, and it's a really great way to get your silk screen onto your board here. And there's, there's so little components that I might as well model all the caps and um, flash and the actual chip here. You got the LEDs over here on the side as well. So if you're doing something where it really needs to fit and you don't want to um, intersect Sturdy. those LEDs, yeah, you can do that. And there's the USB. Pretty simple. Um, and then an, a quick note about the mounting holes. They're actually M2 mm -hmm. size and not 3 or 2.5. They're M2. This is a reason you why can I check have such a big bin of M2, yeah. But yeah, shout out to uh, Lamar and Phil B for um, creating that script to make the, um, mm -hmm. the fritzing parts really uh, programmatic. So that's good. So I can take those graphics and import them. And I might do a tutorial on how I brought in the, uh, the decals in here. So it's going to be good. Yeah. It is a little bit of fudging, but it, it seems to be pretty oh, accurate. Lines up pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, you can get all of the CAD files for this on our GitHub page github.com slash adafruit That's slash right. cad underscore parts, I believe. Yeah, let's take I a look real quick. Linked. It's always linked in all of our videos, so I have a link there. And the guides. Oh, where is it? Two tabs. Two Tab tabs. Overload. There it is. There's a little kitty cat there. So yeah, it's not a very um, picturesque, <laughs> but it's there. I need some um, thumbnail previews. Yeah, they have, uh, they have previews for the STL, mm -hmm. which is neat. I need to start throwing more STLs up there. But they have this nice kind of render engine oh, for the right. STL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like different surface. Um, but not texture. Not texture, no. Because it's an STL. It doesn't have any texture data. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, this is for Tinkercad folks who want to bring this in Tinkercad and just kind of make the thing out of that. Very helpful. Yeah, very cool stuff. Um, I think it's going to be, be it for today. Don't forget, we're going to light some fireworks at 7.30 p.m. We'd like to see you there. Join us. Mm -hmm. Um, Lamar and Phil will be on Ask Engineer at 8 p.m. if everything goes well as planned. Tomorrow, John Park's workshop. He's on uh, tomorrow, Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, mm -hmm. doing some live building, maybe some make code minutes, Ooh. see some cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We get to do the show on, we exercise our freedom on uh, holidays like this, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's really fun. We have coupon code for y'all. Don't forget, if you want to pick something up, you can. It'll start shipping tomorrow. No mm -hmm. shipping today. I'm going to yeah. give the ship team a break. There's lots of shipping out. So Sparky. Right. I'll get you 10% off your order on everything except subscriptions and... Gift certificates. Gift certificates. Certificate. And fireworks. No fireworks. <laughs> Actually, it's a good time to go to the fireworks shop for that. I can't believe a lot of the things that we bought were buy one, get two free. Yeah, they're I like, I don't works. know how that works. It's yeah. usually the other way around. <laughs> yeah, but they just maybe have the overstock and like, hey, there's a shelf life here. If we don't sell it out now, it's going in the dumpster. So <laughs> I don't know how it works. But anyway, thank you guys again for joining us on mm -hmm. this festive day. Mm -hmm. um, happy birthday to America. <laughs> All right, stop. All right, yeah, we don't want to get <laughs> taken down. Anyway, happy birthday, America. Thank you so much <laughs> for all the stuff. See you guys next week. We'll see you next week. We'll see you tonight, and hopefully, tonight. if we blow stuff up and keep all of our fingers intact. It's going to be so loud with everybody setting off fireworks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> we'll see. We'll try. All right, guys. See you next week, and remember to make a great day. Thanks. That's good. See you guys. Bye.